my experience. Okay. Again, with Sean played around with the idea. But I had a chunk of time in the 10 years where I've been doing product management and not business analysis. So I was missing some hours. But fortunately for me, in my spare time, I wrote and published a book on business analysis. So I went and looked at the hours you could claim and looked preparing courseware you could claim. So I thought, well, come on, writing a book, preparing courseware must be the same. So I sent an email to the RIBA saying, can I claim these hours? And they said, yeah, you can. So I thought, cool, now I've got the hours, now I can put it together. So I sat down, very much like Sean, uh, but I did, took about three months <laughs> to complete my application, you know, bits and pieces here and there and so forth. And uh, I eventually completed the application, got my two references. I was very fortunate because I worked with the CBAC uh, in the States. So I had a CBAC, who was my reference, one of them, and the other one was my boss. So I used those two for my career manager at that point. So I used them as references. I must admit, my one reference sent the reference that was supposed to go to the IIBA to me. <laughs> and I must admit, they've obviously changed it because the one I saw was more about me as a person, as professional, as honest, and all of that. So I think they might have made the reference sheet slightly different to the one that I saw completed for myself. And she, she was very nice about me, so I was happy. <laughs> okay. So I then submitted, and this is where it gets to be fun. I submit my application, and I get an email from the IBA. My application has failed reasons for these, and it actually tells you which sections of your hours they have disallowed. My book <laughs> is disallowed. So I then sent them an email, and one other section, by the way, one other section was disallowed. So I then, then sent them an email to say, excuse me, this is your email telling me that you will accept my hours writing a book. Oh, okay, we'll accept it. But we still excluded this other section. And it was about 210 hours I was claiming. Okay. But it took me to 49 hours below the 6, 000, uh, 7,500 hours. So I was a little bit annoyed. In 10 years, they were just qualifying me because I hadn't worked one week in business analysis. <laughs> so I shot off an email to express my displeasure <laughs> with the, the, the situation. And I got a response back. And basically they said, which I suppose I could understand, is procedure is procedure. However, we have a thing called an appeals process. So the hours that have been disallowed, if you can prove to us that they were actually genuine business analysis hours, then you can appeal it. Mm -hmm. So I actually, it was work I'd done recently, and I would done some work for a client, and I realized why I had sort of, why they disallowed it. Because I was talking about the interface to testing. So they saw the word testing and they said, out. But in fact, what I was doing was I was investigating the interface between business analysis, or business analysts, and the testing community, which is all what they do like. So I actually took the report that I'd done for the client, removed the name, and said, this is the report I've produced, I'm appealing. So they then came back and said, okay, you've been, application's been accepted. Now this has taken six months for this to all happen up and down. So now it's getting to, um, sort of, I think it was about um, April, May. I think I eventually got the okay to the application's been. But they don't take it from the time of the application, by the way. They take it from the time the application is accepted. So your year starts then. So, one BA Bot 1.6 <laughs> expires in August. It's now June. Oh, I'm going to run right to 1.6. Two's going to be horrible. It's going to be full of more stuff. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay? So I'm going to write for 1.6. I didn't write for 1.6. Okay? Because, you know, with pressures of work, I just never got to sit down and study. 
So I've submitted it. It's proved. I've now got, see this thing over here? I've got a calendar running. <laughs> so I have to write it before the end of April. No, sorry, the end of February. I think it was, sorry, it was February time. I got, they've got to prove. I have to write it by February the following year. BA Bach 1.6 expires in the August. Still haven't written. So we're getting to a month before my year expires. And I haven't booked my exam. So I thought, guess what? Easter coming up. I'm going to book my exam just after Easter. So off I went to do my study. So while everybody else was clambering around from Khalisburg, because we went away for Easter weekend in Khalisburg, I did the major brunt of my study. Now, my studying was assisted by this thing. This is got what got me a CBAP. Okay? This is B2T's CBAP exam preparation study guide. Okay? And the way it works is they give you a little bit of write up, but then they give you each knowledge area an exam. Now, the way it works, and it worked for me, was I took the exam and I wrote it once, each knowledge area. And I looked at the areas that I had failed in. But the nice thing about it is you don't have to go read the book because they give you the reasons why that answer is correct. So in the answers, they don't just say that one's correct. They give you the reasons why that's correct. And also, they give you the reasons why the others are incorrect. So only in the, my last writing of the exam, you'll see some of them where I actually marked it. That was the third attempt <laughs> at the exam, because now I could actually do it in the book, which was a good thing, because I hadn't taken enough paper with me on the weekend. So I keep this for sentimental reasons. That's my book, OK? You can see what it looks like. Fully pieces, OK? What's more, those are my answers of the, one of the second exams. I didn't have enough paper, so I used the back page of the book. So I can tell you, on my second attempt, I got in uh, business planning, business analysis planning, 49 out of 55. So I didn't too, spend too much time studying that one. Okay, enterprise, uh, pocket, uh, enterprise analysis, 47 out of 54. Solution validation, 33 out of, 30, uh, out of 42. So this is a very sentimental document for me. Because also, if you go through it, you'll see it. See, do read, read, <laughs> okay, read, read, okay. Um, if you go through some of the terminology, the one that really caught me out was um, when they talk about. See, you can see I put my notes in here while I was working through it. Preconditional revenge process. So. It was all the different things. I mean, the one that really, I was just trying to find it somewhere it's in his introduction. This change-driven and plan-driven approach. <laughs> what? Plan-driven and change-driven. Plan-driven is waterfall. Change-driven is agile. Oh, is that what they're talking about? I mean, the one that also caught me was implementation subject matter experts. What the hang is that? It's a technical person. Okay, one of the developers or DBAs. So when you're going through this process, it's those little terminologies that you actually have to learn. Most of you, if you've been doing business analysis for a long time, have the knowledge already. But you have to translate, as you said, into their terminology. You have to understand in their terminology. And I wish we could find a place where it says, uh, Implementation subject matter experts, because just the big arrow, techies. <laughs> okay. That's what you have to learn. So I then really, what Sean said about booking an exam. Okay, I was running out of time, so I forced myself to book the exam, spent the Easter weekend, and a lot, I probably spent three weeks, plus the Easter weekend, studying using that aid. Okay. And then I went down to I booked my exam, and typical of me, I booked it on the wrong week. So that cancellation fee, by the way, because I sent them an email quickly to say, listen, I got it on the wrong day. I did it within sort of 20 minutes. 
So they came back and they said, no, no, we won't charge you because you, <laughs> you came back to us so quickly. So they changed the date. Okay, that wasn't Prometrix, it was the other supplier. And then I went down to the exam and that was quite a daunting, daunting thing that happens. Because you get there and they say empty your pockets. Okay. Cell phone out, no notes, all that has to be put. You get a little locker, lock the stuff in it. And uh, you suddenly feel like, wow, it's here. And really believe in yourself. If I looked at my exam, you can mark a question for review. Of the first 20 questions, I marked 12 of them for review. Okay. I thought I'm going to come back and look at this. After the 20th question, I didn't mark a single question for review. <laughs> when I came back and I looked at the 12 I had marked in the first 20, and I, and I only changed one. Okay. Believe in yourself. If you've got the knowledge, believe in yourself. I then hit the submit button. And for the first time in my life, I could see the mouse cursor shaking. <laughs> I could see it go like this on the screen above the submit button. And I was sitting there, should I hit it now? Should I hit it now? And I eventually hit the submit button. And it came back and said, you may now use the certified business analysis uh, professional designation from the IIBA. Okay. And I looked at the screen and I looked at it again. And I went out, because there's a glass panel where an invigilator watches, so, you know, pulling out notes and things, okay. And I went out and I said, if I press print screen, where does it come out? <laughs> okay. Because I ain't moving this screen until it's, I got a hard copy somewhere. So I went and hit print screen twice, came out and I said, did it print? She gave it back to me. I said, okay, now I've got it. Okay. And then this has been, it was done at, um, San, uh, San Mio, whatever it is. Sunny Hill. Hill. And I walked <coughs> outside and all I wanted to do was sit down. And there wasn't a single bench or anything <laughs> around. So I went and sat on the pavement for 10 minutes. And I just sat there. A, I couldn't believe I'd done it and B, I was so bloody exhausted. Okay. Not so much from the exam or anything, just having actually finished and achieved it. Okay. And uh, then after 10 minutes, when I gathered my thoughts, I started to phone a few people to say I'd actually passed, which was, that was quite a wonderful experience because there are a lot of people who went with me on this journey. And also because I lead the BA practice at the organization where I am, you go cube, okay? Everybody said, but you'll pass, okay? And I'm kind of going, no, I might not, okay? And they're saying, of course, you, of course you'll pass. And I'm saying, no, might not. <coughs> okay, so uh, it was huge relief. And just to give you an idea, this is all you get. <laughs> <laughs> you get a certificate. You get a certificate. You get a certificate. And you can put it as your email signature. <laughs> and you can put the little CBAC logo behind your name. Now, I'm just going to talk about recertification, recertification quickly because that's something I'm doing right now. Okay, I've got to do it by the end of next month. Um, recertification, it's 60 CDUs. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need 60 CDUs, which stands for Continued Development Units. Now, con Continued Development Units can be earned in several ways. Okay. You've all just got one hour. You've got one CD. But not one PD. <laughs> no, not PD, CD. No, you must know the difference. Yeah. There's difference. Okay, CDUs are for recertification. <coughs> you get for writing articles, which some of you may know and do quite often. Okay, um, you also get CDUs for presenting business analysis stuff, which some of you know I do quite often. Okay, but that's fine. But I need CD. You need CDUs in two areas. The other one you get it for attending seminars. Okay, so I was very lucky. I've been to Barca. So I could claim those hours. Um, I have been to a lot of the chapter meetings. So I claimed my one hour for chapter meetings, etc., and all of that. So I've got all the CDUs I need. I just need to submit. You have to re-sign the code of conduct. Okay. Um, and so that was my journey from beginning to end. And you know, 
don't be scared of the study. That was actually the easy part. Okay. It's just sitting down, getting that application done. Okay. And uh, I think it's worth it. And I think South Africa, we're doing a wonderful job because we have, we have more sea bats than Netherlands and countries, Ireland, countries like that. So we really are pushing this sea bat. Sorry, how did you meet uh, Mitchell 21 and ask PDU for the sea bat exam initially? Um, I had attended some training courses in the States. Okay. okay. So they were really, the training courses that I attended, they were in need. So I could claim the, in, in fact, in my time, they didn't have to and you don't, you don't have to go to an E, okay? But it's easier to claim those PD or whatever they're called, mm -hmm. if it is an E, because they've already been told that they, this course is worth 21 hours, 21 <coughs> units, okay? So if you go to you, you don't have to justify the course. You just have to say, this course, this company, E. And immediately they'll know it's 21 hours. And what about uh, the in-house trainings which is conducted within the organization? As I say, you're going to have to explain or send a course summary or something like that to say this is what it was about. So if you get it from an E, you don't have to do that. Okay, you can just say that course, that E plan. There is actually a lot in the handbook about if you want to better in-house courses. Very strong, or there must be a lot of interaction and your know, hands-on stuff. So it's going to be workshop rather than you know, sort of lecture teaching type thing. So, and if, the, if there is a section about it, and it even goes down to saying you could claim per 15 minutes. So, if there was 15 minutes of interaction, you can count as a quarter CD, a P e PD, and you can add them up. But obviously, if you end up with 19 and a quarter, it just counts as 19. Just w one thing I must say on yeah. hours. One of the things that, um, on my application, I've been working BA, BA work for a number of organizations that disappeared. Either, either swallowed up by other organizations or whatever. And when it came to the contact for those projects, I said, this was the project, this was the company, company gone. <laughs> okay. In other words, I can't give you a contact. And they didn't question that. Okay? Those hours weren't questions. In fact, the ones that I gave had references for the ones that one that they questioned those hours. I had a reference for that fund they would have found out it was be at work. So if you can't if you can't trace back a contact, okay, don't panic. You know, ten years back I don't think they expect you to have all the contacts for all the projects you did ten years ago. Okay. Because I wanted to know how they were going to react to that and they didn't question it. Okay. 